Chris Hanning. We're going to start with the uh, case presentations. Uh, I always think this is uh, one of the more interesting parts of the the, the day. Uh, get to see some exciting things from a different point of view sometimes. Uh, first off, we're going to uh, start off with uh, Dr. Mateo from University of Florida in Jacksonville. I had the pleasure of working with uh, Jerry for a year. One of the more imaginative fellows we ever had. He's a regular contributor to the uh, interesting case session. I can remember off the top of my head him uh, talking about tips reductions and, and fistula repairs and uh, uh, difficult EVAR cases. So he's been up here a lot in, the, in this session. And uh, today he's going to talk about the uh, treatment of IVC tumor extension. Thank you, Chris. Um, I appreciate the uh, the invite. This has been uh, my seventh time speaking here in, uh, since the commencement of this meeting. Uh, I always enjoy uh, Charles at this time of the year. So my my talk, um, if you look on the uh, printed brochure, it's it's uh, it's the same talk. I just changed the title. I was trying to be cute with an acronym of some sort, but I decided to ask a question. Um, so I changed it to No Treatment for intrahepatic IVC tumor extension, think again, uh, with temporary cessation of blood flow with occlusion balloon to prevent the heat sink effect during intravenous cryoablation. I have no disclosures. So the, um, the history on this case is that this is a 55-year-old female with hepatitis C and cirrhosis. She has a solitary 6-centimeter uh, HCC that was treated with multiple chemoembolizations and cryoablations in the past. And she was uh, relatively stable with no growth. And you can see I labeled the IVC there to show that there was, there was nothing in the IVC at that time. Uh, I was seeing her every three months with surveillance CTs. If she had something um, in, in the liver, I would ablate it one way or another. But this time uh, she showed, uh, after about two years, the HCC extended into the IVC, as you can see with the yellow um, arrow. And it hasn't reached the right atrium at this point. And on the axial uh, CTs, you can see you can see the tumor well within the um, intrahepatic portion of the IVC. Uh, a venogram was also performed uh, and labeled here. You can see this is the uh, dotted line is the treated HCC. The tumor is within the IVC intrahepatic portion. It hasn't, again, hasn't reached the, the right atrium. So we kind of scratched our head here and did some literature searches and tried to figure out, you know, like, how, how do you treat these? And there's not, there's not a whole lot of treatment for these. A couple of quick facts on HCC some of the, the articles that I have found is that it is the seventh most common carcinoma um, worldwide and third most common cause um, of mortality. And of course, there is a predilection for the hepatic veins and the, the um, inferior vena cava. When, <coughs> when you're diagnosed <coughs> with this, um, you have about three months to live. Uh, great tendency to venous invasion and uh, one study has shown that the TEE for HCC at the time for cardiac meds is as high as 11%, and this study showed that HCC was extensions of right atrium was as high as about 5%. So, you know, we said to ourselves, what are our um, what are our options here? So we're thinking, how about how about intravenous cryo cryoablation? <clears throat> so, uh, this is not a, a plug for Galil, but this is, there's several different companies out there. We use Galil. Um, these are 17 gauge needles um, that can make different size ice balls. There's a chart um, from Galil that shows the different sizes um, of the, uh, the shaft and the ice ball of the lethal of the lethal ice. Mechanism action. Basically, we're going after these guys um, for, for, for good. So, the, for for cell death from freezing, you get lysis, dehydration, and microvascular destruction. Apoptosis is basically the formation of blebs. The um, cell breaks apart, and then it's phagocytized by phagocytosis. As you can see on the right, there's some cells that are in the middle of apoptosis. So what are the challenges of something like this? Well, you have, you have flowing blood. And ice plus flowing blood don't, don't do well. And 
you'll, you'll end up getting something like this, this, this little video on the bottom, which you have ice formation, you always have this flowing river, and you'll never really get it to freeze over. And it'll end up being something like this. You'll get this ice, but it just won't freeze for you, and you'll never get a true ablation. You won't really help the patient. And if you try to do the cryoablation with the, with the, uh, the flowing blood, it's, it's a setup for, for failure. So the heat sink effect is what's the problem. And the definition of heat sink is it's a tumor situated near a major vessel that may, may not be adequately ablated. So the options are when you normally have um, a tumor that's in the close uh, vicinity of, of the vessel, you can do what they call hydrodissection. You, you place a large skinny needle in between the two organs or the two structures, and you either put an angioplasty balloon to separate them or you, or you separate them with, with saline and contrast. But you can't do that because this tumor is within a major vessel. So what is the solution? I look at it like this. Pant, dog wears pants like this, we wear them like this, or we wear them like this. So this is the solution right here. This is the, the Q50 um, Stencraft balloon, usually used in the arterial structures. And the concept here is, <clears throat> if you were to place this balloon in the IVC in a suprarenal intrahepatic region, you would still be able to put the cryoprobe, as you can see right underneath the, the CNEO concept and and not have the flowing blood. So that's what we did in vivo. So this was intravascular cryoablation with intermittent cessation of flow uh, to the suprarenal IVC. So the Q50 balloon was inflated within the IVC in in the uh, on the angio suite, and then the patient was was uh, was taped to the patient's uh, leg, and then it was we were, we put them um, in the CT scanner and blew up the balloon. And then what we did for the procedure is three separate probes were placed at, in this particular case, 10, 11, and 12 o'clock to completely ablate the, the tumor. During the freeze algorithm, the Q50 balloon um, within the suprarenal IVC was inflated for three minutes and then deflated for 30 seconds. And, then, and the, this we, we kept doing this until the ablation was complete. And with the cryo probes touching each other and being contiguous, they formed a solid ice ball and to the point where we couldn't even uh, aspirate for, for a few moments uh, any blood from the balloon. So follow up, the patient tolerated the procedure well with no complication, was discharged the following day. Here's the six week uh, follow up, and you can see the tumor is definitely more faint, and you can see it's starting to kind of kind of fade away there from the, from the pre and the post. So then we brought her back, and here's the three month, and now you can see it's just a little nugget, and I think we pretty much nailed this guy right there. And um, it's, uh, you know, the tumor has shrunk down. It's, there's, there's no, um, uh, it's, it's not enhancing, and it's essentially dead. It's, in sh it's shrinking down. It will probably could go away when we do our next follow -up. So intravenous cryoablation is a novel technique that offers a safe method for treating HCC extension tumors with the assistance of a large intravenous balloon for cessation of the heat uh, sink effect from blood flow. Now you take the two ordinaries, everybody loves peanut butter, everybody loves chocolate. So imagine if the peanut butter was the cryopro, which has been around for a long time, and the chocolate was the occlusion balloon that's been around for a long time. But when you put these two together, you get the extraordinary, and then we save lives. <laughs>